Hi, welcome to the May 2023 Business Insights Online Network interview. This week, um, this month, Pete Allison will be chairing a Q&A debate about growing greener business. And he is joined by Richard Price from Pointer Consultancy and Matt Busby from the Name Label Company. So over to you, Pete, and here's to a fantastic session. Thanks, Guy, and welcome to Richard and Matt. Um, we try and touch on these uh, when we do these interviews month on month on things that we can see are important to a business community and things that are growing and developing and sometimes use them as a little bit of a, a thought space. Um, and we're, we're all aware that we're in a, an environment in climate crisis. Um, and we've been doing really since almost the very genesis of the show, right back in 2015, we've been looking at ways that businesses can help and support that can do stuff with their own business. But of late, um, there's a more cross-sector, cross-scale approach. You know, we can we can look at this as individual businesses, but actually if we take a step back and we talk about society as a whole and the business community as a whole, then um, there are businesses that are ahead of others. There are things that individual businesses can do. But, but what we started beginning to think about is collectively as a business society, if we're going to make a step change that is needed to catch up with where the problems are occurring in the climate environment crisis, then it, it will take a more um, uh, top level piece of thinking. So um, we've been thinking about that. And with Richard's business, that will come out a little bit as we go along the way. We've been thinking of building a, an, a thread of content that will read all the way through the shows, which is less about an individual business and what it needs to do and what it can do to make a quick difference uh, and more about actually how we want to look at this as a as a society so we've invited richard um from point of consultancy who as as um uh guy said is is, is worked with us a fair bit and joins us at the shows um and has been doing some thinking around this and matt uh, busby who um i've known on and off a little bit for a few years who's on a personal level, taking his business, the name label company, right through to quite an extensive level of, of carbon neutrality. So um, before we do anything else, and I've got a few questions here, and these guys have had a chance to have a quick look at least of them in advance, so we kind of know where we're going with the conversation. I hope these things are always catch us by surprise. But before we do that, I'm going to let these guys uh, just introduce themselves a little bit more properly in the context of what we're going to say. Richard, do you want to go first? Just tell us a little bit about who and why and what and who you are. Yeah, fantastic. So uh, Richard Price from Pointer Consultancy Group. Uh, as a company, we are four years old and we are four people strong. So a small consultancy based in Bath, Russell uh, and Oxford. And we uh, focus on project program management, change management, bid management and also sustainability. So general business improvement uh, consultancy with some relatively deep specialisms. I think it's probably worth mentioning just uh, given what we're going to talk about that my background and similarly the background of my business partner is um, as aeronautical engineers actually. and Part of the sort of relevance of that is the systems engineering, the systems of systems approach to solving complex problems and understanding how you uh, address um, uh, complexity and, and how you can arrive at a complex solution to a complex problem. Um, I think that's probably quite relevant to the sustainability piece. And certainly that's how we um, try and approach the work that we we do, which is bringing that background in, um, yeah, say, in aeronautical engineering project and program management in that context and applying it to the sustainability agenda. So we maybe have a slightly different view uh, than some classic um, sustainability consultancies, but uh, yeah, hopefully that can that will come out over the uh, conversation in the next uh, next half hour. I think. Fabulous, thanks, Richard, and, and certainly I would uh, concur. It's a complex problem we're looking at here, and have been for years, and I'm sure will be for years as well. Matt, do you want to just introduce a little bit of uh, yourself and the name label company and the journey you've been on for the last few years? Sure, yeah. It's uh, Matt Busby, name label company. We make personalized name labels. Uh, we've been going just over over 10 years now. And, um, you know, sustainability um, is important to us. And I don't know whether some of it's due to sort of my African background. I was born and grew up in Zimbabwe. And, uh, you know, ever since I was a little kid, you know, recycling, uh, awareness of the environment was was really really important and you know we learned a lot about that at school as well uh, and so I've I've been pretty passionate about that um, you know since we started the business and also having worked in a couple of other businesses before we started the name label company where uh, greenwashing would be an understatement 
in, in a spectacular style. And, um, you know, it's something that really didn't sit well with me. So when I had the opportunity to, to address it as the name label company, you know, we did. And um, you, we, we went for ISO 14001. Uh, and I wanted to take it to the next sort of level, next step, and, you know, kind of drilled and um, put on a workshop and uh, introduced me to Ian McQuone, um, who was able to sort of take us to the next um, part of the journey. Um, and and it, and it has been good. And also what, what um, I've been really encouraged by is, is the buy-in from staff. You know, it wasn't dictated by me. The, the, it, it was a simple sell to the staff, and they really built into it. So, you know, we, we're not the finished article and we're not a bunch of tree huggers but we like really take this seriously and um you know what what we're doing is small but you know small steps will, will get us there mm, brilliant thanks matt and um yes watching the journey of a number of the businesses uh, over the last couple of years has been really interesting and getting different people's perspective on things um just in the vein of what how we're looking at this you know we, we we've got an environmental emergency and a climate crisis on us and it has been for a while, and there's no brand new news in that. But from each of you, um, I'd, I'd be really interested to hear not so much about what you and your business and your immediate clients are, are, are doing and thinking, but what's your personal take on the, the broad business attitude in response to the situation from the whole wide business community as we sit here in 2023 in a fast changing world? Matt, do you want to kick us off with that? Sure. Um, you know, I, I think there's, there's a huge amount of um, apathy towards, you know, moving towards uh, 2050 to, uh, to do some of the stuff that we need to do. I suppose we see 2050 is a, is a long way off. And um, and I think it's been exacerbated just recently by the cost of living crisis. You know, um, all businesses have felt the squeeze on, on everything. You know, for us personally, you know, every single SKU that we have has gone up in price. So, you know, it really sort of m makes you focus on probably other areas um, there is a lot of apathy. I don't think people realize the, the, the scale and how quickly 2050 is going to come. So, um, and I don't think uh, we're, we're being pushed along um, or, or guided or helped along. You know, it's very much, it's such a, such a very slow start. I'll, I'll put it that way. So the attitude and response is the response is woeful, attitude is apathy. And it's interesting to hear that. And that we'll we'll pick up a little bit on that in a little while to come. But mm. Richard, you're you're sitting in the in in the consultant situation. You're looking at a complex problem through complex eyes. What's your take on how we as a society, as a group of businesses, are collectively looking at this at the moment? Mm. I I think it's a I think it's a mixed a mixed piece. I think to put some degree of positivity on it, I think there's increasing signs that businesses are kind of interested in addressing uh, the situation. Uh, I think fundamentally without government level drivers i think that business response will be limited i think that that apathetic um approach isn't isn't um i don't i don't disagree with, with what matt said and i think also there's an element of where people are interested in getting involved i'm not sure it's as focused as it could be on the most impactful areas i'm not sure that necessarily businesses know how best to uh, to get involved um i think that there is a growing recognition um of societal or customer demand for businesses to be more sustainable i think there's demand from customers um in some markets and i think there's definitely demand from employees i think matt's matt's comment you know that, that he had no pushback from his staff doesn't surprise me at all i think particularly um in the in the younger generations but i think generally there is a there's a high degree of interest and i can drag out some stats if you want but there's there's definitely some recognition that more sustainable practices are are just better for business um and that i think all of that create some sort of organic drive uh, in the right direction but it's it's completely you know it's heavily countered by the legacy of covid the wider cost of living issues which are putting pressures on businesses uh, that hinder change and i think just remove thinking space and re remove capacity to to do what for lots of people i think will be perceived as a nice to have um thing so as i said it's it's a mixed bag i i, I think I, I maybe couch it slightly more positively than that but i'm not i'm not saying I, i'm not disagreeing with them significantly Yes, interesting. I mean, yes, it is a mixed bag, and we know that there has to be a, a systemic change. Uh, and 2050, it's not that far off, but then it is a little while off yet. There, there's a two edge to that. You know, there's time time to be thinking about and doing things, but as, as Matt says, it'll be right on top of us before we know it. Uh, the other factor 
that plays in uh, is innovation when it when as innovation moves forward, pace of change also increases. So trying to read what 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 the pace of change will the change in the pace of innovation will be in the same period is is, is important as well. Um, meeting the goals that we have at 2015 for 2050, nonetheless, is 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 going to be a huge challenge. I'm picking up from both of you that um, where we sit here in 2023, when we're not we're not on track. Let's let's mm -hmm. let's let's make it a statement. We're not on track. Mm -hmm. One of the things I pick up, not just in the world of environment and climate, but, but in many things, when when business knows there's a change and there's a change that's in popular discussion, but it becomes um, almost uh, being a bit belittling here, but it almost a trendy discussion, right up to the point where it hits the a decision taking situation that becomes accountable and has financial implications. Um, and sometimes it has a it has trouble getting over that hump and into mm -hmm. actual moving reality. So I guess that here in 2023, the question I'm interested to, to hear your view on is what what is it that we need to change? And and we in that sense can be almost anything. I'm, I'm just happy to, you know, are we talking about we a country with a government or we a family or we a business? But what what is it that we have to see change? as we move forward here from 2023 towards 2050. Richard, do you want to pick that one up? Yes, I mean, I think fundamentally for me, the, the, the goals for 2050 are incredibly challenging and likely to be unachievable uh, unless they um, are sit alongside genuine legislation and regulation changes to support uh, and or force businesses to make progress towards achieving them. Uh, things like the Better Business Act are a, are a good example there. I think tied to that is is making sure that that activity isn't just aimed at larger businesses now large businesses have responsibilities for uh, ESG reporting and so on but but I don't think that's a fundamental you know uh, driver at the moment to what they should be doing um it's interesting a, a lot of our work focuses on SMEs so that's where we that's where we kind of put our brain power if you like and where we where we think about things um 99% of businesses in the UK are SMEs, they make up 60% of the workforce and about half the turnover. So if we can make incremental changes within small to medium enterprises, that will have an impact on the overall problem. Um, I think a lot of that change, however, needs to come from um, comes at a societal level and hence the need for the government impact. You know, we need to honestly talk as a society about what our expectations are around air travel or fast fashion or, or food even um, because I think those things will need to change over the next three uh, next three decades and fundamentally most people aren't going to vote with their feet for that uh, without some sort of uh, external external pressure to do so so I think I don't think it's reasonable to expect business or uh, or, or SMEs particularly to kind of drive that sort of change but I think um, I think the government needs to be uh, pushing it and I think if they do then uh, SMEs can play a, a really useful part in ensuring that um, there are offerings to meet uh, that change in demand um, potentially at, at the expense of larger companies here yeah, the dynamism of small businesses is is a, I think will be a critical part of this and I think there's clearly a real opportunity there for small businesses to um, if they can successfully identify what's required is to get in and in front of larger businesses and uh, and get get real classic business benefit out of it by being if, if not first movers then early movers and able to uh, take advantage so I, I think there's i mean it, it's an incredibly incredibly complex question i could mm. give you a, a lot more a lot more on it but I, I think that's probably where i'd start there's a there's a really interesting dynamic you're putting out there between the small business and the larger businesses and who's who's putting and who's pushing at what point. And of course, the third dynamic that has to sit in there is the governmental legislative dynamic. And the, the, the relationship and how the transaction between those three works is of course going to drive a lot of things going forward. And it's, it's not being very effective at the moment. Matt, what, what's your take on this? I, I, is I, I can agree with everything that, that Richard said on that. Um, I, I think for me, one of the, the, the important things that we get right is the messaging and the reason why. And I think, you know, a lot when we talk about the, the change required, uh, the, some of the messaging come out can turn off a lot of people. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, when I say the, the extreme end of uh, 
the, the sort of eco warriors or that sort of stuff might say we've got to do it now it's, it's an absolute you know emergency catastrophe and stuff like that yes it is but i think if we were a bit cleverer on our messaging we would take a lot more people along with us um, uh, than having people push back and and i don't know what the answer is i don't know i don't know what that messaging is but i just feel that you know a significant amount of work needs to go around that messaging to bring more people with us uh, as far as um you know, driving. I think the government uh, and and legislation is going to be absolutely crucial here. And and it's you know we only started to see some change when, for example, when uh, if you're going for public tenders or something like that, that you have to have a carbon reduction plan. Up to then, nobody bothered about it. But because that sort of rule came in, suddenly there's a lot more activity about people looking at, at what they're doing, measuring what they're doing, and then coming up with plans to to um, sort of reduce and, and, and set proper targets in place. So, it, you know, it's, it's a carrot and stick uh, sort of thing. I, I think at some stage, because we are, as, as Richard said, I think we're, you know, we're likely to, to miss the 2050 targets. Um, so, so, you know, if you don't have, um, you know, to force behavioral change, I think at some stage there could be a carbon tax coming in. And, you know, if you're not ready for that, uh, it, it'll be a quite a blunt instrument. And so if you haven't got your ducks in a row before then, you know, as small businesses, we might be picking up some of the cost of that. So, you know, whilst, you, you know, you made the point sometimes in the early stages, it's trendy to do this, it actually might be a, a very good business decision to get your ducks in a row early so that you're not penalized a little bit later on. But just, you know, come back to one point that Richard made earlier about, you know, on the positivity for us as a small business, what, what's been great is over the years, you know, we've had, a handful of people, um, you know, people on one hand said, we've chosen you because of your environmental credentials and your sustainability sort of policy like that. And we've seen that over the years grow from, you know, you could count them on less than, <laughs> than one hand. And then there's a few more and a few more. Now that we, we're starting to see some momentum there, but it, it's far too slow and, and we need to quicken the pace. Mm. No, I, I, I get that. And I think you're both resonating that 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 greater need for um, governmental input which of course will inevitably turn this into a political discussion not that we're going in that direction with this but that that is what it will become and we sit here obviously in the UK anyway with an election in a, in a year's time so that's going to be an interesting side of that there um, in the early days of business insights we were actually sitting on a call um, thinking about Africa we, we, we ended up with someone representing a, a South African gold mine out of South Africa on the call which I won't go to this, you know, it's a slightly bizarre moment. But what came out to us in, uh, in, in the discussions then is there is a legislative reporting authority in South Africa um, for companies, certainly over a certain size, and don't quote me, who actually report their carbon footprint and their carbon agenda, which of course drives a real um, visibility and transparency in reporting. And that's one of the tools which it, it may be you can see would become useful because things would, would be a lot more transparent and, and, and uh, available for inspection for there. Growing a greener business, um, it, it's, it, if we look at an area and, and we're sat in Gloucestershire or the context of this call on the whole is we're talking about the UK, um, but growing a greener issue, it, it, it's, a session, no, it's an essential message um, for initiatives in every area. That's micro, small and large business. Um, the support levels for those in different areas. I mean, we've, we've talked about support levels that, 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 that are needed in micros. Do you see any uh, short-term support that could be put into the micro business environment um, that, that could help that? Um, or, or, or how do you see that happening? So that was a bit of a, a ramble of a question there. But Matt, do you have any thought? I mean, you are a small business. Have you seen, or do you, is there anything missing from the portfolio that you can see that you You'd like to see there in the call yeah definitely is when we first started the business we you know we were actively engaged with like the growth hub the LEPs, that that sort of stuff you know and and the support was was great but there was nothing around sustainability uh, no this is 10 years ago that might have changed i haven't sort of engaged with um with sort of the growth hubs at, at this stage but you know that 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 should be a funded head in each of the growth hubs around the country who, who's talking to the small business, the SMEs, you know, Rich gave us the figures of, of how big that, that market is of, of the SMEs. You know, th there should be a funded head there, getting out the messaging uh, and, and getting help 
to, to change behaviors and that, that sort of stuff. I think, you know, the, the amount of support out there, unless you really, really get your head down and go look for it, it's just not there. I, I think, um, yeah, there, there, there's so much more to be done in that area. Uh, yeah. and, and Rich, you're, you're working with businesses in a consulting role. Um, uh, obviously, there's a certain amount of work of support you can put in yourself, but actually governmentally, and, and we've mentioned the growth hubs and the LEPs have only got a short amount of funding left. But what, what's your take on what, should, what we could see going there in the short term? Yeah, OK, so uh, a couple of bits. To it. So I think first off, there's a, you know, putting my systems engineering program management head on. Um, I think where we're coming from is, is we're, we're fundamentally tied to the idea that success is driven by um, getting those sort of design principles uh, requirements uh, right at the start of the process, and having a clearly uh, articulated and managed plan to achieve those requirements. So a core part of what we're um, what we're offering or what we try and do with clients is uh, is around sustainability strategy to try and make sure that what a client is doing is um, is relevant to them as a business is fundamentally included in their um, in their purpose and their vision and values so that it's it's actually part of what they do rather than an, an add-on as a as a an extra activity that they need to do on top of it and also we use something called a material materiality analysis which is a you know a, a standard thing in the sustainability world to try and say which bits of sustainability are actually relevant to you as a business because the difference between matt's business you know product product oriented um dispatching to to you know business to uh, consumer compared with ours as a service business, where we can affect sustainability as a whole and the environment in general is, is markedly different to how, how Matt's business can. So understanding those sort of things, that, that's where we put our focus. And looking at what else is, is out there, um, clearly we're, we're available at a very reasonable price to, uh, to help a company <laughs> if necessary. Um, but the likes of Set Squared um, in, in, in Bath, Bristol, uh, West of England Combined Authority, um, they have free resources, free training uh, packages. We're actually going through with the Set Squared Sustainability, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, workout, I think it is. Uh, at the moment, we've got a, we've got a couple of um, couple of days of work with them next week just to go through their systems and see what we've missed and what we what we could also be thinking about. And that's free to us. That's fully funded. Uh, the West of England uh, Combined Authority have um, fully funded um, short courses, sh uh, short uh, training activities that can help companies understand. Uh, and, and we're hoping to become a, a supplier to them just um, a pro bono thing for us to to do short introductory pieces around the work that we'd normally do. So, so there's definitely resource out there. There definitely isn't as much as I think there should be, and I'm not sure it's focused on the right, the right things necessarily. Um, the other thing I would say is that, um, and maybe we, I think we will talk about it in, in more in subsequent questions. But um, B Corp is a really, a really good one. So B Corp for me is the sort of gold standard of um, of accreditation for sustainability. But actually, it's also a really, really good system for working through and understanding what it is you could be doing to be more, more sustainable. And it gives you a really helpful uh, and structured uh, way of approaching things. So even if you're not after the badge, even if it doesn't feel that you want to go fully through the process, having a look at it and working through it is actually quite a useful way to um, understand how your business might be more sustainable overall. Yes, it's interesting you say that. I mean, uh, something, B, B Corp obviously is something a lot of us would be aware of, but it's also something that when it comes up, you tend to think about it as a real beast of an animal uh, with a lot of overhead. But actually, it was pointed out to me, and we've got a session down in Bath and North East Somerset in, at the end of June with someone who 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 does B Corp, but actually is what well, they've got their couch to 5K, they call it. And they're, they're running yep. it at the show, and it's very much not necessarily with a view to you're going to go and become part of the B Corp, but actually, we just want to do exactly what you said there understand it, understand what the process is. B Corp going through the whole thing of B Corp would be a, a big overhead for a small business. In that same vein, um, a question that we that I find myself in a couple of um, debates about every now and again is whether or not there should be legislatively based reporting of um, environmental credentials and statistics. Now, for a, for a large company that that obviously has a corporate structure and has the capability to spend the time analysing, then yeah, okay, you can maybe see that that would be a sensible thing. I'd be interested to hear what you would think about if you go right to the other end, the micros, the most of the guys here on the call today, because 
everyone's concerned for obvious reasons about an overhead. If there's only one of you person running a business, then it's just another thing you have to do. Flip side of coin, are we looking at something which we have to make systemic changes about? So what's your view about whether there should or shouldn't be across the board legislative statistic reporting? Uh, Matt, do you want to take that first? Yeah, sure. I, I, I think I think that there should be. Uh, you know, just picking up on on your your points about the B Corp and and um, you know we we had um, fourteen thousand and one, um, which I thought was very important to get. But actually, when we spoke to our customers, we said you know we, we got fourteen thousand one. Very proud of that. And they said, and you know that it, it didn't matter. You know, we, what, what 14,001 did for us, which was great, is it got us some processes in place to manage, uh, measure um, sort of our environmental impact, uh, which was good. And then, you know, the, the, the fact that we had to go on every year and re, um, get re-accredited and pay, to pay the money, that wasn't important for our customer. Uh, it, it didn't make sense. So you know, I you know when you make the point about Bcor, it's very very expensive, fourteen thousand and one, less so, but but still expensive. So, but you have to have something in place to be able to first of all measure to find out where you are, and then um, you know that that will guide you where there's savings to be made in um, you know waste reduction, energy reduction, and all this sort of stuff. So unless you've got that benchmark, unless you've got that line in the sand, there's absolutely no way that you can make those changes going forward. So I think it, it, it's absolutely essential. But also the other point to make is it, it's not only, you know, the environmental impact that, you know, having those um, measurements in place and working out where you are and how, where you can save, there's, there's a financial impact as well, you know, is you can actually save some money. You, you know, as we had Ian come in and, and work with us and, you know, we identified areas where we could reduce some waste. You know, so so that was a good thing, but also it saved us money. You know, we we're reducing waste; it saved us money. So um, th th there's huge benefits, but you have to get that that um, benchmark in place to be able mm -hmm. to do that. And and I think unless you put it across the board, um, you, you know, it's I, I don't think we're going to realise the full impact unless yeah. you know everyone does it. And, and, and Richard, what's your take? Do you think there should be uh, st st statutory responsibility to report? So I think if I can come on to that bit of the question yeah. in, in, in a second, let, let me, I think fundamentally for me, what, what I find really difficult coming from highly regulated, you know, from aviation background and so on, is the lack of standardization and kind of um, rules to, to follow around sustainability. And I think actually carbon footprinting and net zero carbon neutral um, is, is a really, a really good example of that. There is no standardized acceptable methodology for conducting carbon footprinting there is therefore no way that any company can properly put its put its hand on its heart and say i am you know we as a company are carbon neutral or or, or meet net zero and i'll maybe flick that the other way is that two companies with um with this, exactly the same operations one could claim they are and one could claim they you know and one might not feel that they can um because uh they're, they're, they're measuring it in different manners so for me it's it's like the um the calorie, the calories and salts and so on that you get on 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 food packets. It would be wonderful if we had a an ability to look at a product and say this one comes with X tons of carbon and this one comes with twice that twice as much carbon and thus be able to make a meaningful judgment as consumers about which one is better for the environment from 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 that perspective. So I think before we look at reporting, we need to understand what it what it is we would be reporting and, and what the what the value uh, of that. And for me, that's based in if you look at from the environmental point of view, the carbon neutral point of view, it's both understanding how you do carbon footprinting, but also what we mean by offsetting, how acceptable offsetting is as a means to uh, as a means to counter your your carbon footprint, and therefore whether you know carbon neutral, carbon uh, you know carbon positive, all that all that sort of stuff um, is possible. So I think if we had standardised measures, I think that reporting would be would be a good thing. I think that starts to become a useful and viable piece, but until we have that sort of standardised measurement, I, 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 it's, the, it's the usual uh, usual thing: rubbish in, rubbish out. That there's, there's not much point um, reporting yeah. if 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 you're not reporting like for like and comparing apples with apples. Then I think that makes it very very difficult. So the picture we get here is that there's a there's a lot of uncertainty, possibly a lot of goodwill, but a lot of uncertainty and a lot of 
disengagement, if you like, from government and from, from, from a lack of places to guide. Um, okay, so uh, it's, it's, it's 10 to 3, and obviously we're moving onwards. Uh, what I'm going to say is, as a, is a, is a closing question to you guys, just to, have you got any quick words that you would like to put out to any of the guys here? And then, then we'll just uh, see if anybody's got any questions they want to ask. But uh, Richard, do you want to go first? Is there anything you'd, you'd like to sum up as we have this conversation for everyone on the call or even watching this, of course, at a later date? Um, I think... I think it was, it was very interesting thinking about this before the call. I think the the main thing is that there is a role for SMEs in, in this process. I think I would really emphasize, um, as Jill put some stats in the in, in the chat, so, so I, won't, I won't read out mine, but it is of real interest to consumers. It is of real interest to employees, what a company does uh, around sustainability. Interestingly, Pam Barbate, who I know you know Pete, um, talks at, at, at the shows, um, it was either her or, or her partner, Ronnie, um, highlighted that actually, in, in their view, it's not now a, a differentiator to be talking about sustainability and, and being sustainable as a, as, a, as a business. It's actually a significant business risk if you aren't doing that. And I think slightly slightly negative summing up perhaps, but I think that's probably you know something I'd couch is that it, I think we're at the point that whilst there's not enough structure and control from my point of view, uh, at, at a government level to make things really move at the pace they should do, it is still moving. It is now a really relevant thing for small businesses. It's worth doing from from being from a purpose and impact point of view, but it's also worth doing from just a simple business common sense and risk mitigation point of view, because otherwise I think there's a very real danger of being caught uh, behind the curve and uh, and having some problems from it. Um, mm. Not quite as cheerful as I'd hope that to be, but I think that probably uh, <laughs> probably covers it off. A lot of food there for thought. Matt, do you have any closing yeah. thoughts you want to about? It is I'd echo a lot of you know what Richard said, but but it's a case of. Um, you know, you've got to get started somewhere. And, you know, if we wait for, you know, standardized, you know, standards to come in and that sort of stuff, we could be sitting on the sidelines for a little while. So it's a, it's a, for, for me, it's a case of getting started. And my, my closing statement probably in you know, stark contrast to where I started, uh, where I was saying, you know, the greenwashing was it was awful and, and, and absolutely abhorrent and, and I hated it. But, you know, my, my point is, is, you know, close enough is good enough at this stage until we get those standards in. So, you know, I would say, you know, just get on, get started, because unless you get that benchmark and where you can start to realize what impact you're doing, you know, how you're going to work out where you can start saving and making the difference. So, Brilliant. yeah. Well, thank you both so much. Has anyone got any any questions I want to lob at these guys? We're a little bit over time, but if anybody has got a quick question, no. OK, well, that was a really interesting, really interesting discussion. And uh, we will be continuing it live on the ground in Bath for sure in uh, at the end of June. Guy, back over to you. Great. Thanks very much, Pete. That was fascinating and thought provoking. And it'll be very interesting to see what the next few years bring in the development of everything to do with uh, a topic that is not going to go away because it's one of the most important on the planet. So brilliant. OK, 